Hi, this is Eddie Beeson. You're listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall. I was Mandark in Dexter's laboratory. Ha 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 ha. You are listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall on Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Know that I probably had one of the worst love lives in history next to somebody with the last name like Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am and here we go. I am talking to a relationships counselor. Uh, and author, Mr. Richard, I'm going to butcher it, Sotavir. Exactly. You got it. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to walk one thing back is, is I'm a coach and not a counselor. There's a, there's a fine line we don't want to cross there. Oh, okay. And, uh, um, it, it's just, I, I'm, I'm in the coaching realm as opposed to the counseling realm. Okay. And well, I guess that could be the first question. Then, what's what's uh, what specifically would be the difference between a coach and a counselor? Well, a coach is is somebody that it's basically I'm basically a life coach, and and uh, my my experience is all based on on personal experience and personal study over the last oh thirty six or thirty seven years. It's a you know I've been I've been a student of self and relationship improvement for that long now. Whereas uh, a counselor or a therapist, they're going to go through formal training, um, you know, a, a college degree, hang out the shingle, that whole type of thing, and they'll get really down deep in the weeds with you. And when I come across somebody that that needs uh, that kind of work, they have some serious issues that they need to deal with. I refer my those people to the counselors or the therapists where they go into great, great detail into their past and help them overcome some really, really uh, difficult life situations or uh, past situations. That's not that's not where I focus. I focus on on trying to help people move forward in in their uh, in their dating and relationship lives and 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 again it's probably uh, from a pilot perspective it's probably a forty thousand foot view uh, you know I just look at the big picture and I can help you figure out uh, what's going on in your relationship but if you come to me as a couple I'm usually going to say go see a therapist or go see a counselor or you need to break up one of the two. I think as a couple, if you're already needing counseling or therapy and you're not married yet, yeah, it's not the, not the right relationship. Stop working on it. Try Stop trying to force it. Let's move on. All right. Well, the, the, obviously, the biggest question is, uh, and, and you said you've been doing this for, uh, if I was understanding correctly, 37 years. Um, what made you even want to get into this field? Like, what 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 led you to to this personal experience? Just something you've noticed you had a knack for? Yes, it's all of those. Um, I've actually been a coach for about the last seven, but I've been a student of this stuff for for over 35 years. And, you know, it started for me, it started with um, wanting to improve myself. It started as from a sales perspective. I've been in sales for almost 40 years. So I started looking at how to become a better salesman. And then I it it, it veered into how do I become a better man? How do be, I become a better husband? How do I become a, a better father? And all of these things started to morph and uh, uh, it, I just started to recognize that people that I didn't even know would just walk up to me and start sharing their relationship. And as I'd look around and, and see if somebody had put a tag on me that said relationship coach or um, tell me about your relationship because it was just really uncanny. And I started discovering about 12 or 15 years ago that when people would come up and start sharing these things, it was just automatic. Everything I'd learned about me was... Uh, it applies to virtually everyone else. And so I, I, and, and I've been blessed. God has blessed me with, with a, with a gift for discernment. And, and you can tell me your story in about 10 to 15 minutes. And I can tell you what things went wrong, what things went right and, and how to move forward. So, um, you know, it, it's, it blows me out of the water most of the time. That's, 
that's amazing. <laughs> and of course, you know, in the back of my mind, I keep, I keep, as you're talking, I keep thinking about this. The only thing I can compare this to your job sequence to, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably get this all the time. You'll, so you'll, you'll, you'll wreck on me right off the bat is I'm thinking of the movie hitch. I've been dubbed the Kansas City Hitch. <laughs> but that's that's almost, in essence, exactly what I do. I help folks make better decisions about the people they date and the relationships they get into. Now, and, and that is based on a true story. A guy in, in I guess, in New York or Manhattan, um, you know, there are, some, there are some interesting concepts in there. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to dance. I'm not going to teach you how to kiss a girl or... Um, those types of things, but in essence, it, it, what it, what it all boils down to is, is helping you find your voice, um, as, as a single, single guy or a single woman, um, how to become focused on exactly what you want in a relationship. So it, it's, and, and it, it's, um, uh, it, it, it's just an interesting process. And what I found early on in my, uh, as I was, as I was going through my divorce and ending my career as a financial advisor, I was kind of wandering aimlessly through the dating world. And I just started recognizing all the mistakes that we make as, as, uh, when we get back into the dating world. And even, even, you know, the first go around the first marriage, I can go back to my first 30 days that I was dating my ex and see the red flags. But because of infatuation and raging hormones, we just ignore those things, and it's 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 uh, full speed ahead. And let's you know, let's make this happen. And twenty five years later, it's like, holy crap, what did we do? You know, <laughs> it, you know. So, and and there were red flags all along the way. It doesn't mean we didn't have some great times together. We had a lot of great years together. But in the end, there were there were too many too many problems, too many issues that caused us to break up. And I contend that if we pay more attention to the details up front, take the blinders off and step back out of the infatuation, we're much better able to make uh, relationship decisions based on the realities of, of what's going on in that relationship. That's fair. Uh, but actually, you, you bring up a, a fascinating point. I'm going to, I'm, going to preface this with uh with my own personal experience with with my ex-wife you're talking about like the, the the blinders are there or the blinders are there blocking you from seeing the red flags right off the bat mm -hmm. i have three children uh with my ex-wife uh my oldest is actually 12 years older than the other two uh we've known each other that many years mm -hmm. but the, the fact of the matter is is that she and i dated uh, all those years ago and we broke up because she was cheating on me to the point that I questioned whether my first child was mine. I had to get the paternity tests and everything. Sure. And of course, many, many years we didn't speak or whatever, because you know, a lot of hatred there, mm -hmm. but we were young. So when things started seeming like going back together and we did get back together, wound up actually getting married, having two more children. I thought, think i was in that scenario where i would wearing the blinders and uh the, this is leading towards that question because obviously once a cheater always a cheater and of course my divorce my divorce is because of the fact that she was cheating on me throughout our whole marriage um <clears throat> the question is is could the blinders not just be the raging hormones or whatever like in that particular situation is it also the fact that maybe i fell victim to the fairy tales you know love something let it go if it comes back it's yours forever you know the happily ever after prince charming stories that we all grew up with in one way shape form or another does that have influence on how we view relationships oh absolutely and that's that's where the infatuation comes in and uh, the infatuation, you know, they're, they're the blinders, you know, it's, it's, it's the infatuation is what gives us the goosebumps, the, the butterflies, the, the, uh, the wobbly knees, the tingly toes, whatever it is for, for each, each of us individually. And, um, unfortunately, and, and your scenario is, is, is so, is, is very common, you know, where you break up and you get back together. And part of the reason we do that is because number one, it's comfortable. We are, we've already have a connection with somebody. We know a lot of their faults, uh, yet 
we're not willing to acknowledge all of those faults or all of those problems because this big chunk of it is really pretty good. Mm-hmm. But it's the other problems. And, you know, and whether whether she's whether she's a, a, a cheater um, the, the first time and the second time, if that was the reason you broke up the first time, odds it, odds are it was going to be the reason you broke up the second time. Um, and that's and and it and I I'll say that for any situation it doesn't mean it doesn't make any difference whether they're cheating it could be a lack of communication it could be any number of things mm-hmm. um, when you break up the first time the odds are if you get back together it's going to be the reason you break up the second time the third time the fourth time and I know this for a fact I've been through revolving door relationships where you get back together three or four times and and then finally you wake up and say enough. You know, and so, yeah, there was there uh, for whatever reason. And and I think guys are probably, uh, well, they're both men and women. We dive back into past relationships again because they're comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like putting on an old pair of shoes. You know, you don't have to start over with somebody. You don't have to start learning someone all over. You don't have to start learning their characteristics, their story and keeping everything straight. You already know it. Uh, so, yeah, that's we often shoot ourselves in the foot when we when we move back into uh, a past relationship or, or move back into that relationship. So um, I always discourage when you break up the first time, be done with it. Move on because um, the, the problems that were there to begin with are going to be the problems that are they're going to be there later and cause you to break up or cause you great angst later on. Well, it does, it does beg the question though, in, in your experience and in, in what you've seen people you've talked to, have there been, no matter how rare they are, have there been successful reconnections uh, oh. where they did address whatever the issue was that broke them up to begin with? Maybe, maybe it's maturity. Maybe it's uh, they had some sort of life altering experience, whatever that, that actually fixed whatever that problem was the first time around well absolutely there are exceptions to every rule um i just i just look at it from a very practical or pragmatic standpoint and saying yeah let's not keep doing this you know let's let's move on and 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 find find extraordinary and that's what i'm all about is because so few people have ever found extraordinary um, they, they, they tend to settle for, for just okay. And they end up even the, even the best or even the marriages that last first marriages that last only about 12 to 15% of those marriages are truly happy, healthy, um, extraordinary or soulmate type relationships. That means that when we look at all marriages, you know, there's only about 10% of all marriages that are really extraordinary. The rest of us are just going through the motions. And I, you know, I, it, I try to teach people how to not settle for just average, not just ordinary. The idea is to understand exactly what you want, exactly what's going to make you happy. And it doesn't make any difference what anybody else thinks. I've had people say, oh, my friends all tell me I'm too picky. I've been told that I'm too picky. Well, no, I know exactly what I'm looking for. And, I, and, and I'll know it when, it when it comes along. Um, and, you know, God willing, she's going to have um, the same feelings for me. You know, so, you know, it's always it's always a bear to be in a one sided relationship. But, you know, but when it's when it's right, when everything comes together, it is so truly amazing. You know, the the connection, the communication, um, it, it's it's just so, so much deeper, so much. um uh, it just it, it literally defies words is that connection is so deep. Well, the other the other question that this kind of leads towards too, um, again, in your professional opinion, and I apologize in advance. Normally, I try to keep politics out of this show, uh, so this is very much going to border on politics, but <laughs> but, uh, but not in the sense of like Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, but the ideology of the nuclear family. 
Uh, do you think like the the high divorce rates in in this country, uh, the the loss of relationships, is because people have stopped having the old school mentalities of marriage is forever, and you know, when something's broken, you fix it rather than just replace it. Have we made breakups, uh, especially marriage breakups, too accessible? Well, there is there is that component, and I think it was back in the '60s. When and I think it was um, and and don't your audience please don't hold me to this. Uh, I believe it was Ronald Reagan um, back in California made uh, no fault marriage or and I, I, I if it wasn't him it was it, I think it originated out there as no fault marriage or, or no no fault divorce. I'm sorry. And, you know, that that migrated across the country, you know, that along with the fact that that, uh, you know, it's it's we live in an age of immediate gratification and virtually everything is disposable. There isn't anything that you can buy today that that really doesn't have some planned obsolescence. And, you know, you look at I, I'm looking at my iPhone. It's three years old now. And. I, you know, I can't keep it charged. You know, I get half a half a charge. And my point being is it's not that old. You know, back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you'd get something that would last 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Today, mm -hmm. not so much. And so we have that mentality about relationships, too. You've got online dating. You've got social media. You, you know, if, if your relationship isn't working, well... I can get rid of you and I can move right on to the next relationship. There's always somebody else right around the corner, you know, and it's just a matter of, you know, a little, a little Google search or a little, little match.com or Bumble or um, Tinder or whatever, whatever website you're on, or even, even uh, Facebook dating, you know, you can, you can access people quickly Um you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, we don't have those same values. I even went into my marriage. I, you know, I came from a broken, broken home. My parents were divorced when I was about, I don't know, somewhere between when I was about 10, 11, 12 years old. And I swore when I got married that I wouldn't make that mistake. You know, my marriage lasted twice as long as, as my parents, but in the end, it still, it still crashed and burned. So uh, I was kind of the same situation. I always swore I would never get divorced. And uh, I waited like I, I was ready to settle down when I was 18 years old. Like I, I was done with the dating scene by the time I was done high school. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get married until my beginning 30s because of the fact that I wanted to make sure it was the right person. And, and again, I fell under the trap of once it's, you know, gone, come back, blah, blah, blah. Thought mm -hmm. was short. I was wrong. 18 months that marriage lasted. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> my whole entire life 18 months with somebody i knew for over 20 years wow you know so it it, it just goes to show in that aspect but it, it does raise the question uh in my mind in, in your 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 view your your point of view um based on your experiences and everything conversations you've had with couples and everything mm -hmm. what are some of the more basic red flags that people should have their their eyes out for and obviously I, we're going to be talking about your book here in a minute so i don't want you to give away like you know for, for lack of a term here, i don't want you to give away the plot line but you know <laughs> maybe maybe a little taste of like you know maybe an example for guys and an example for girls in in a sense of like this is something you definitely want to keep an eye out for yeah, with in in a lot of these things cross both lines. They they you know they're 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 both a male and female uh, issue. Um, one of the things that that I see so often is people jumping back into the dating world long before they're ready. Whether they're just broke up from a long term relationship, just got divorced, got just just become widowed. Um, most people try to get back into the dating world too quickly. They're not emotionally ready, um, you know, especially if they came out of a, a, a bad, messy, ugly divorce or a bad breakup. It, you know, we haven't had time to heal. And I'll use myself as an example. Uh, my ex hated my and openly told me she hated my or didn't like my sense of humor. 
So okay. for the last 10 years of my marriage, I was walking on eggshells. I couldn't say, you know, I just couldn't be the the man that I wanted to be or the the personality that I wanted to be. And so that, you know, we all morph or we all change or we all adjust to accommodate that relationship to the, that marriage or that relationship. And uh, what happens is especially if we've had to do it for a number of years, when we leave that relationship, we have to take time to find out who we are. Right. Because I guarantee you, um, it took me almost two and a half years to get my my sense of humor back. You know, and and even my best friend, we were talking one day, it was about, and I, and I, I made a mental note of this, it was 13 months after my marriage had ended. I was on the phone with my best friend and he said, you know, I haven't heard you sound this good in a long, long time. You know, so it, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's a healing and grieving. We have to take time to grieve the loss of a relationship. I don't care how terrible the relationship was. Uh, it, it, it's a loss in our life. And, you know, that person, no matter how bad it was, that person is no longer, no longer, uh, no longer there. And that leaves a, a gaping hole in our lives. You know, we don't have anybody to come home to, nobody to talk to, nobody to holler at, (laughs) you know, and, and leave the dog out of this. Don't be kicking the dog when you're, when you're in a bad mood. Um, so, you know, all those things take time to heal and there's no magic wand. We all do it at a different pace, but we have to, we have to move through that. So that's one area. Um, recognizing red, the red flags of emotional immaturity. Um, jealousy, uh, you know, I can't tell you the number of people that, and, and especially women that come to me and complain about their boyfriend or their ex being, being jealous, you know, and, and guys, come on. Um, and, and, and my ex was that way. I, I, as a financial advisor, part of my, part of my marketing to go out to chamber socials and those types of things. And my ex would get upset with me when I'd go talk to other people. She'd accuse me of flirting with, with, with other other people at the at the event. And you know, I, yes, I naturally it's a natural occurring um, uh, characteristic of mine. Um, but you know, I knew who I was going home with. But it it it, it upset her, and it, and it wasn't intentional that that I tried to upset her. But I was just out connecting with people. And so, the, and you know, that's the emotional immaturity or the the jealousy. Um, then there are there are other issues of codependency and narcissism, and I get into that stuff in the book. Um, you know, we don't diagnose it, but we give you some we give you some of the the important characteristics of of those those uh, issues so that you can start recognizing it very early on. And I, I contend that if you're you're paying attention, you can tell whether somebody's worth pursuing further within the first 30 days of dating someone. Uh, you know, if you're paying attention, many times the first date is it. It's one and done and and then you move on to the next one. But you know if 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 you're connecting with somebody, um, you know, there, there are ways and techniques of figuring out, yeah, is this guy worth pursuing further? Is this woman p- worth pursuing further? And, you know, I try to teach you how to step back from the infatuation and raging hormones. And then you can step back in after you, after you've figured out whether, yeah, this is a good guy or potentially a good woman and, and go from there. I see. It, it's funny. Cause I'm like, there, there, there's been many times, and and this is this is no bad mouth on people I've had on this show in any way, shape, or form. But there, there's there have been people on 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 my show that I've talked to, and I've talked about their product or or whatever else, and it's it's fascinating, mm-hmm. but not really my cup of tea in some way, shape, or form. You know, so of course I promote it and I show the same enthusiasm I always show. I want your book, but I don't want it because I'm out on the dating scene. I want it as a past tense reference. I want to see all the mistakes I made or the things I missed. Yeah. You know I, mean? I, I almost, I almost want to like flip through it thinking like for again, an example as my ex wife and just like, yep, I screwed that up. Yeah. I screwed that up. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> or yep. She screwed that up yeah. because, and, and, and Chris, this is a, it's a two way street. 
you know, it, it takes two to tango. Even if it was a 90-10, she had some input into this, into the, into the breakup. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, 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 it it's it's not all on your shoulders and and you know especially if she's cheating um but you know i was having this conversation with a with a facebook group earlier today that you know and and the the the, the comment and you even made the the comment early on once a cheater always a cheater and i i i studies have shown that that's technically not true only yeah. about 7% of, uh, and, and I'm not disputing your situation. I just want to make that crystal clear. Um, only about 7% of cheaters are chronic cheaters. What I've found is that when somebody cheats in a, in, in a, in a relationship or, or strays on, on the relationship, um, it's because there's something missing at home. Something is, is not right. And it don't, and, and I want, I want to be crystal clear, everyone. I, I, I know some people are going to be, uh, picking up the pitchforks and spears and knives and, and coming at me. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. If you, if, if your ex stepped out on you, it just means there's something wrong in the relationship, whether you recognize it or not. They're in a, and part of the problem is they may be lacking communication um, skills that they can tell you what's missing. You know, uh, and and a lot of us don't know. We just we just have this eye for for someone else or someone else comes along because we're we're looking for that that ultimate relationship, but we're not processing it properly and thinking, well, no, let me leave this relationship first. Um, and, and please, for all your listeners, I am not justifying cheating. I am not justifying going out and getting a divorce. I am, I am, in fact, I'm vehemently against divorce, but it happens. And that's a reality of our world. You know, it's what I'm saying is that we have to take a look at the, the relationship in, in its entirety, even though you may feel that you're with your soulmate, your, your partner may not feel the same way, in which case you're in a one-sided relationship and that sucks. But, uh, you know, if 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 you're adult enough and and mature enough to and open enough to have the conversation, well, let's recognize it for what it is and, you know, part ways because you both deserve to be in an extraordinary relationship or with your soulmate. Um, and, and I use those terms interchangeably. I know when I say soulmate, some people are going to flip out and say, no, nah, there's no such thing. Um, I used to think the same thing and, and, and I, I used to think, yeah, a soulmate is just a goony woman term and, oh, I'm looking for my soulmate. No, I tell you, I met one and, you know, it, it, it's, and that's where a lot of my experience comes from is that relationship that, oh, it was just amazing. So, um. See, I'm starting to think this conversation is going to go a little longer than a half hour to 45 minutes. Cause yeah, I'm sorry. Speak. No, no, it's fine. Every time you speak, I have more things I want to say. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, uh, just reiterate, uh, on your disclaimer about cheating, uh, in, in this aspect. And this, this is something that I know, especially men, some women, but especially men have this thought process when they get cheated on cheat. Somebody cheating on you does not necessarily mean that you're bad in bed. It has it, it, the cheating power party. The reasons for cheating may have nothing and usually don't have anything to do with your libido in some way. But, you know, uh, it could be it could be because of uh, like uh, like he said, um, lack of communication. Maybe you guys argue too much. Maybe this person shows interest in in what the, the the cheater is interested in more than you do it's not about your genitalia or your or your abilities in in the bedroom nine times out of ten i would, would you say that's a fair that's a fair assessment oh i would yeah if if not even even higher you know i very rarely and and there may be a few a few a few exceptions to that but um, I'm totally on board with that. Yeah, it, it generally has nothing to do with with uh, your proficiency in bed. It's it's more about it's more about connecting in different areas, intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. Um, you know the so there's there's a lot more to it than than just the physical aspect of it. So, and and 
to clarify myself, I said in most men it is a it is a thought process when they get cheated on because men are very egotistical when it comes to sexuality sure. programmed that way. But that doesn't mean that women don't think the same thing and, and same rules apply. Exactly. Yes. And women that step out are generally um, are not feeling loved at home. Men that step out are generally not feeling respected at home. Um, so, you know, those are, and, and while those are big blanket statements, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty universally true. So, you know, when, if you want to correct that issue, um, you have to start working together as a couple to, to start ironing out these issues. And, um, I was having a conversation online about cheating, uh, earlier today with someone and, and uh, I just shared, you know, I shared that it's it's a um, what I just what I just shared about, and I just had a brain fart, so I I have no idea where that was going. So <laughs> I'll just end it there. That's all right. We'll come back to it if it comes back. <laughs> Trust me, I've had those I've had those thoughts, especially like when the the bothers me the most is when I'm actually in process of it, like I'm. Yeah. And I'm talking, I'm talking, and my brain works faster than my mouth sometimes. So, yeah, as I'm trying to describe what it is I'm talking about, my brain's already on the next subject. Next thing you know, I'm like, what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> my brain's already on uh, What's for dinner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ADD at its best. Uh, but no, I mean, like, uh, I'm fascinated by this and, and, and I've, I've run into this myself. So I'm kind of curious before I even go into more details here. Uh, I've, I've always been the person that people have come to, you know, uh, high school, early twenties, whatever they have relationship problems or, or professional problems or whatever the case may be, they come to me. And yes. for some reason I'd have the right answer, maybe because I was an objective third party. Maybe I was able, like you said, uh, with, uh, with relationships, able, able to step away from the infatuation or yeah. whatever the case may be. But one thing that I've always noticed about myself, and I'm curious if you've run into this yourself with, especially with the field you're in, I was able to fix everybody's problems, but my own, like my advice never worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my advice works for me, but the and and my best friend just pointed out that pointed this out to me uh, just a month ago that you you have to I have to take a step back from being Rick the coach to being Rick the guy right. or Rick the boyfriend. You know, and and try to separate those two. And he was very wise because he had problems separating his professional life from his family life. And he, you know, it it cost him. It, it, it he's still married and has a great family, but it it cost him a lot of angst uh, to learn that lesson. And and he shared that with me. So um, I have to, for me personally, I have to step back when I'm, when I'm dating or when I'm in a relationship and be just Rick, the guy and not be analyzing, you know, everything that's going on, you know, and just, and, and I have to be more aware of, of sharing my feelings, my emotions and, and whatnot so that, so that she's in the loop. And sometimes I just have to say, you know, I, I'm sorry, I've got to step back. I'm being Rick, the coach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and share with her. So, um, and that, that helps, but you know, it, it is difficult to step back and say, and, and shine the, shine the light on us, uh, or on ourselves individually. You know, it is always easier because when you're in the midst of, 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 of the turmoil, so to speak of a relationship, good or bad, um, it's, it's often hard uh, for us to, to step out of the the uh, the the emotions, and that's that's what made me a pretty decent financial advisor, and and um, makes me a pretty decent coach is because I can step back away from the 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 uh, the emotions 
because you, you start talking to people about their money, that becomes a very emotional subject. You start talking to people about love and relationships, that's a very emotional subject. And so I'm good at stepping back and trying to get people to step back from those emotions and look at things logically. So I have to, I have to step back into the emotion. Right. <laughs> and so that's a, that was a long answer to a really short question. <laughs> But still, I mean, it's there, and 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 I imagine that is a conflict for somebody like like yourself who has to constantly remind yourself to not overanalyze what you're doing because yeah. I mean, that is your job. But at the same time, relationships, I, I always I always kind of joke and say that uh, the difference between a best friend and a relationship is sex. Uh, <laughs> but the re the reality is is that it, it's not too far from the truth in the sense of the the difference between a friend. And a lover is the emotion attached. Like I love my friends, but I don't love them as much as I love my wife. Right. Uh, or, or girl. Nor should you. Nor should you. Right. But really it's a fine line between the two, yeah. you it know? Is. And, and so I, I, I got to imagine like you have to, a part of making a, a positive relationship, especially in, in your particular scenario is that you have to remember that sometimes you have to live in the moment and not step back and take the blinders off and say, well, was that right? You yeah, know what I mean? like, <laughs> exactly. Let's shoot it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And I was, I was, uh, I was having a conversation with a, with a, with a lady friend and we were kind of duking it out verbally. And, and I mean, it wasn't an angry conversation, but the, the amazing thing that happened was, that the and and I I called and I was not in a good mood because of an incident that had happened the day before and she was not in a good mood because of, of that incident and but the more we talked and the more we shared our feelings um, and what we thought went on um, and it, it it turned my my whole perception of the event around because I didn't know what was going on in her head, nor did she know what was going on in mine. But when we were able to air it out, we became much closer and, and much more connected. Um, you know, so it's, it, it, it is about communication. It is about sharing and it is about, um, being open to being wrong. You know, I, and, and, you know, when, when you walk through, through life thinking that, yeah, it's gotta be my way or the highway, I guarantee you, you're going to have problems. Um, you know, and you have to be open to saying, well, yeah, I guess I can see your, your perspective and, and, you know, kind of adapt to that. You know, if, if, if you're closed minded and not, not thinking it's, 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 it's all about you, then, then you're going to have problems, but you have to be able to be open and share and talk. And, you know, you talk about, and, and I mentioned this, this earlier that, you know, the problems between men and women is communication and we, and, and men and women communicate differently. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, women will want to share, you know, their entire day with you and guys are designed to start fixing problems. And, you know, we start saying, you know, well, no, you should do this and this and this. But that's not what she's looking for. She's looking for um, a, a, just a, a, an ear. She's looking for a shoulder to, to, to lean on. And there were so many times in, in past relationships or in my marriage, I'd have to stop and say, do you want me to just listen or do you want my help to fix this? And 99 times out of 100 is, yeah, I just want you to listen. Well, so to be, to be fair, um to 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 help placate the 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 male ego like you said men men i always looked at it as men are more ma rational and women are more emotional right uh, and that, that that's not meaning that they're psycho hoes beats crazy or whatever i don't mean that, <laughs> i don't mean that type of emotional right. i mean their their thought of uh communication their thought of their their mode of thinking leans towards more of the emotional side how things feel where men are more rational like you said they're problem solvers right. sometimes being that shoulder, being that ear is fixing the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Th because what they're typically what women are doing is as, as they're sharing their, their day or their problem, 
they're figuring out the the solution while they're sharing it with us. And they don't need us to come in and say, oh, you need to do this and this. They're already figuring it out. They just want somebody to vent to. Um, and that's why that's why when women get together, it's, you know, it, it, you know, they're they're going back and forth. They're sharing. They're talking. And they're solving their own problems just by sharing their day um, or sharing the issue or whatever it is. And, you know, guys, we have to learn to ask the question, you know, do you want me to do you just want me to listen or do you want me to fix it? And so, you know, that's that. And, and there again, that's all part of communication, you know, mm-hmm. understanding if you don't understand what she's looking for, what she wants. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to move forward in any kind of relationship in a solid way. Well, it also leads to the opposite side of the question, which kind of, you know, is a double edged sword. Uh, And actually, I was teetering on this question for quite a while now is uh, in in your personal uh, experience and and professional expertise. uh, Obviously, we always we always say that marriage is work and marriage is compromise. But I think that also goes for relationships. But Mm -hmm. how much compromise is too much compromise? Like uh, you were talking about before, where you where you said you weren't you walked on eggshells because your your wife your ex wife hated your sense of humor, so right. you compromised your own personality right. to accommodate her. So yeah. in, in your in your experiences in in your in your opinion, when does the compromise become too much compromise within the relationship? Whenever you have to compromise your morals and values. Um, that that's too much. You know, if, if, um, I, if you have to compromise your personality to, you know, if, if she says in my case, I don't like your sense of humor, or if he says, I don't like you wearing that, you know, I don't like you looking at other guys. I don't like you talking to other guys. You know, if you're, if you're a very outgoing person, you, if, if, if they, if, if, you find yourself uh, with somebody that tries to control you. Those are, those are, um, and you start, and, and that kind of leads down the narcissistic um, tendency road where uh, you get somebody that wants to control your every, your every move, your every, um, you know, I, a friend of mine dated a guy that was very, very narcissistic um, she couldn't go to the grocery store alone. She couldn't go get her hair done alone. She couldn't um, go get her car work done alone. He would take off of work and make sure he was there with her. You know, that's, you know, um, you know, they tend to try to separate you from your friends and your family. You know, they want complete control over you and they only want you doing what, what they want you to do. So those are some very, 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 uh, those should be huge red flags that that right. that um, you know start the minute you he's they start and it's not just he she um, they uh, start telling you what to do or you know wanting you to compromise your morals and values then it's time to walk away uh, and and the sooner you recognize these things the easier it is you know you know when you the the sad thing is most people will spend um, six months a year two years five years in a relationship and the whole time recognizing that this isn't quite the relationship I want and then they finally wake up and say yeah it's time to make a change and they've wasted all this time right. um, you know I, the things that you know you can have little arguments about you know putting the toilet seat down or you know <laughs> ladies ladies if he leaves it up, you have two hands too. You can put it down just as easily. Mm-hmm. You know, before you sit down, look. You know, just or turn the light on if it's the middle of the night. You know, I, you know that to me, that's a silly argument. Um, it's kind of funny you mentioned that when uh, the current girl I'm with now, when I was courting her to to date, uh, that was one of the pickup lines I used. Is I'm already I'm already housebroken. I know how to put the toilet seat down and come with a ready made family. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know which and and I mean you can you can argue and uh, you can argue about what which way the roll of toilet paper goes or you know whether you squeeze the tube of toothpaste um from the middle or from the bottom you know you know if if you squeeze from the middle I squeeze from the bottom you get your own tube you mess up your tube I I'll, I'll keep mine nice and neat so <laughs> but don't screw with my toilet paper it's always over the top <laughs> 
You know what? I, I had a friend who ran a uh, cleaning service who who took care of like rich people's homes and stuff, uh-huh. like you know, went in and did the cleaning and their dishes and their laundry and, you know, clean their house. And professionally, it's it's over. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it's not under yeah. it's over. <laughs> just just for people who want to know yeah. um <laughs> there you go <laughs> but the thing that the thing that i'm fascinated by this and i know i got to get to the book but it's just so many more questions like uh you know like when you're talking when we're talking about the compromises the one of the things that has always bugged me in relationships that's always bugged me and i'm victim of it too you know is that you find that person you're dating that person you're with that person and you think you're in love with that person, but you got to change that person. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not love. No, like, that's that's infatuation. And and it goes back to what I what I mentioned earlier, um, like in your relationship, there were some some really good qualities about her that that you really just loved. But there's this other mess that that um, that you have to deal with. And the, the, the key thing to remember is you can't change anyone. Um, and, and if you do, what's going to happen is it's either going to be a temporary change and you're going to, the, the, your partner is going to circle back around and pick up where they left off. They're, the change is going to fall by the wayside. Or if they do change permanently and it was not a change that they wanted to make, um, animosity, anger, and hostility are going to be building inside them. And at some point in that relationship, it's going to blow. And if there's, if there's enough issues that, that he's had to change or she's had to change to accommodate the relationship, it's going to collapse like a, like a, like a house of cards. Um, and I'm, I'm being cognizant of my time here. I'm, 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 I'm watching. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we can always do a second episode. So <laughs> we could do that. Yes, absolutely. But uh, I, I, I the, the one nice thing of not being like a, a radio program or, or something that's aired on like ABC or something is that I can control my time. Like I said, yeah. I personally, I, I keep the shows within those time frames because of the fact I figure people's attention span. Right. You no, know, it's, it's the Internet generation. They're going to lose interest after a half an hour. Yeah. But I also tell people, I'm not cutting you off if we've got a good conversation going. So if this winds, okay. up, if this winds up being a two-hour episode, then people are going to get a two-hour episode. Then... Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to wear out my welcome, Chris. Oh, no, you're, you're absolutely fine. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Uh, but And hopefully my listeners will be too. But, uh, you know, and I, I feel like this is a point I've got to give a little bit of a disclaimer in, in what we're talking about here, because I know with people listening to what we're talking about, uh, we are advocating for for keeping relationships together more than anything else. Absolutely. We're, we're giving you we're giving you like red flags and, and examples of things that like a, a bad idea get out. But in reality, it's because we're, we're looking for the problems to be able to fix and move on and keep the relationships together, right. which this is what i mean by the disclaimer yeah we are and, and, not advocating staying in a toxic relationship if you are in a relationship that is abusive physically emotionally uh mentally verbally, yeah fully get out absolutely and <laughs> if you have problems and and i don't care where you're listening if you're having problems in a relationship like that there are resources out there for you there are there are shelters that you can stay at um there are, you know find family or friends that can take care of you or or house you for a short period of time till you get back on your feet you know there are any number of of, of options or solutions um but for the average relationship or the the average marriage, uh, there are ways to to either improve or uh, you know if if you're not married, then you know sometimes it's it's a matter of having the adult conversation and saying, yeah, this just isn't the relationship I'm looking for. You're a great guy, you're a great woman, whatever it is. Um, we need to part and move on. You know, it, it it's just it's a relationship that's just not working for me. Um, so. You know, from that perspective, 
and 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 that's that's part of what I try to teach people is that you know, when you do the when you do the due diligence and the and all the hard work up front and dating can be hard. You know, it, 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 it's tedious. It's, it's, you know, getting to know somebody and, you know, it's the hundred first dates before you find the, you know, the one that's worth pursuing further. Um, that can all, all make you crazy and, and make you want to give up. But when you find that right person, uh, you know, it, 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 it makes it all worth it. You know, and, and again, going back, you want to do all this work on the front end because, when you when you wait to try to fix things on the back end when you're already married, it makes life so much more difficult, you know. And and it doesn't mean that that you're not going to have problems in a relationship. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems in a marriage. Life is going to happen, you know. Life is going to throw crap at you, and and um, you have to deal with it. You know, somebody's going to get sick. Somebody's going to lose a job. Somebody's, you know, a family member is going to die. You know, there are any number of things that, that life is going to throw at you. That's going to stress the relationship. Um, you know, kids are going to, you know, do stupid stuff and drive a wedge <laughs> between you. Um, you know, it's just, Hey, I've been there. Uh, so, you know, it, you, you have to recognize this, but if, if you take as many of the roadblocks and the hurdles out of the way early on, and then it, it makes getting through the, the, the rest of life so much easier because you've got somebody that's, that's there to, to, to help you, to support you, um, somebody there that's to enhance you and, and, and enhance the relationship and you both should be doing that for each other. It should be, you know, it's, it's not a a marriage or a relationship. It's not a 50-50 thing. It should be a 100-100 thing. You right. know, you both give to the relationship with no expectation of anything in return. But when you're in the right relationship, the magic is you get so much more back than 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 what you can ever put in. You know, and I've talked to literally hundreds of people Couples that are in that are in um, what they call their or what they consider their extraordinary soulmate relationship, and every single person has said the exact same thing. My partner has brought so much more to the relationship than I ever could have imagined, and that has been a universal truth for everybody that's been in a in an extraordinary relationship. I mean, they they just. You know, you make your list of must haves and your deal breakers. And, you know, obviously they don't have any of the deal breakers, but they have so many more must haves than, than you ever dreamed of. So it, it, and, and th- you know, when you find that extraordinary relationship, oh my gosh, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Well, that, that, I think, I think that's the one, because I, again, I want to get to the book. So I think the final thing I'll, I'll bring up here and I'll get your opinion on here is, uh, is uh, one of the major problems personally that i've seen within relationships and especially in this day and age of social medias and and instagrams and twitters where we're all interconnected so deeply uh, that that everybody's always up in everybody else's business forgive the ghetto part of it but yeah everybody knows everybody's what everybody's going on um and i i want i want to know how factual you would you would take this statement part of what destroys relationships is comparing it to other relationships guys stop c- keeping up with the joneses we all have that friend who is in that diabetes uh diabetes sickeningly sweet relationship that you you know every time you see a post from them how much i love you you just kind of feel <laughs> like a sugar rush you know <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking of a different term, and (laughs) I'm trying trying to be nice about it. But I mean, you know, we all have those friends. We all know people that have that, for lack of a better term, that perfect relationship. But just because it's perfect for them, does not necessarily mean that in that exact same situation it'd be perfect for you. So stop comparing what John and Joan Smith are doing to what you and your significant other are doing it would would that be fair or is that, that yeah that's fair because it, with, i mean if if we were all identical and all looking for the same thing then then yeah then you can compare 
But my list of must-haves is going to be very different than yours, Chris. Mm -hmm. And yours is going to be very different from your best friend's. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to evaluate our relationships on what they bring to us and what we bring to that relationship. And, and again, I'm going back. It's, 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 it's not a 50, 50 thing. It's a hundred, hundred thing. You know, you, you have to give a hundred percent and what, and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going down a rabbit hole here, but one of the things that I find, especially with women is that you, they've been burned and when they get burned, um, they tend to wall up and, and guys do the same thing. I, I'm, I, I, you know, we build walls, but you have to remember the walls that you build to protect your heart are the same walls that are going to keep out the love that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you have to, when, when you get back into dating or when you are dating, you have to slowly take those walls down so that you can let that, that person into your life. And you have to be prepared to be hurt again. It doesn't mean you will, but you have to be prepared for that to happen. Because, you know, we just don't know. As we get to know somebody, we're going to, you know, we, our, our emotions start to flow and, and uh, we start to, start to really connect on, on some levels. And then all of a sudden you find a red flag and saying, oh, that screwed that up. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're with this broken heart and saying, ah, oh, I'm never going to do this crap again. And, uh, you know, but you have to get past that and recognize that it was just that one person, you know, the, and, and uh, I can't tell you how many, how many women I've dated. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a man whore. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> you know, but I've, I've been in several relationships where I've had to remind them. I'm not your ex, you know, and, and, you know, and that's, that's part of that burden. So, you know, you have to get rid of that baggage. You have to unpack it. You know, the next woman that, that, that you date, um, the, the next guy that, that she dates, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're not dating the same person, you know, mm -hmm. you're dating someone new. So you have to recognize that. So, um, if, yeah. it, if you are dating the same person, it's because that's who you went looking for. Exactly. Exactly. There's, yeah, there's a lot of that. And uh, that's, and that's one of the things that I try to get people to do is evaluate their past relationships. And especially if they have similar, similar characteristics and similar endings. Um, remember, you're the one that's the common denominator in all these relationships. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and say, okay, what did these guys have in common that I found attractive? Or what did these, what did these women have that I found attractive? And start saying, okay, that should be a red flag for me because that's what happens with, with this type of person and my personality. All right. So now we got to get into the book. We, we've got, Absolutely. We, we've got to get into this book here. So <laughs> you, you, you've, you've written a book about, uh, about the exact subject we've spent an hour talking about. Yes. Uh, you, you said it was dating backwards. Is dating backward. Dating backward. It, it, dating backward. A practical guide to dating and finding your soulmate. And in that book, go ahead. I see you're asking a question. Oh, well, what I was going to ask is, is I, I don't, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure how to phrase this. So I apologize in advance if it comes off wrong, uh -huh. but is this more of like a, a how to guide or is this more like an anecdotal past experiences, uh, type deal? Like, uh, for, for lack of a better term, like the, uh, like the Tim Allen don't stand too close to a naked man biography yeah. where, where he kind of told jokes about his life where you can't really tell if it's, you know, fact or fiction, you know, it's it. And that my answer to that question is yes. <laughs> it's a combination of both. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a guide. And the, the the title has two meanings. It's it's most everybody starts dating backward. They start dating before they know exactly what they want in a relationship. Um, so what I, what we do in the book is we take them back to the very beginning, the very basics. Become crystal clear on what you want. Uh, create your must have list. Create your deal breaker list, and know what you bring to the table. You know, and one of the things that most of us don't do is is sit down and think saying you know. Am I the person that I would love to date? You know, and look look deep inside yourself. And if you say, no, I'm not the person I would love to date, then you've got some work to do on you. 
Um, then we talk about communication and how important communication is. And we devote oh, uh, something like two and a half chapters to communication, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, you know, uh, uh, you know, just all the different aspects of, of communication and how to do it better, how to do it right. Um, and then uh, we talk, we get into, like I mentioned earlier, we get into some of the topics of of narcissism, you know, the red flags of, of narcissism, um, codependency, emotional immaturity, and some other things in there. And um, so that you can start recognizing red flags early on and being able to walk away from bad relationships, poor relationships, toxic relationships, and, and, and get the hell out of Dodge, so to speak, uh, so that you don't waste a lot of time and emotional energy with the wrong person. Uh, so, you know, those are, that's basically a thumbnail sketch of the book. Okay. Uh, um, now this, this is available. I imagine it's available online, but I'm a uh, bookstore yep. as well. Like people can walk uh, in. The no, generally, no, it's only available online. Okay. Uh, you can get it at my website at ricksodabeer.com backslash resources. And I'm sure you'll share the link underneath. Um, my uh, name is such a, my name is such a treat to spell. So, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, then but, it's also available on Amazon and it's available as a paperback and their e-reader, the Kindle, uh, a, a Kindle version. Uh, so, um, wh wherever you go, uh, you know, either, either Amazon or my website, you can, you can access the book and in both places you can even, um, access, uh, you know, part of the first chapter and, and, and read it before you buy it. So that's, you know, we'll see what you think. Um, and I mean, after the, after listening to this podcast, I mean, they, they should just want to run out and oh, grab yeah. a copy for themselves. I mean, you know, really, <laughs> like, like I said, I've got, I got another interview that I forgot about today that I'm going to be doing tonight, but after I'm done that I'm jumping on Amazon. I'm buying the book. <laughs> I well, just, just <laughs> thank you. Um, and then what I'd also like to offer your listeners is a, a free download. If, if they're interested, it's called the five biggest dating and relationship mistakes and how to avoid them. It's like a five or six page PDF. Um, all you do is you find it on my website, ricksodabeer.com. It's right on the first page of the website. You just click the button, say, yes, I want my copy. Give me your name and email address and boom, it's in your, it's in your email box in about 10 seconds. So, uh, you know, so, and that's a, that's a freebie. There's, there's no obligation, no nothing involved with that. Just, it, it will give you some information to, to help, help your listeners move forward and in their, in their dating lives. So. Well, it also it also raises two more questions for me. One that uh, one to address something you had mentioned earlier, and then one obviously with the book here. Uh, the book here is this uh, the first of possibly many? Do you intend to maybe uh, release some more uh, further publications handling? I, this? Yeah, I would love to. I've I've got a, a couple more books in my head. I just haven't got them on paper yet. Okay. Uh, I started. I actually started. <laughs> I started working on one, and I. I got probably about ten or twelve thousand words in, and and um, one of the one of the issues I was addressing was was sexuality and and how to please a woman because you know it, let's face it guys you know it it's tends to be all about us and not taking care of your woman and satisfying her. And as I was writing this, it was becoming more of a porn uh, a porn novel as opposed to. <laughs> as opposed okay. to a, a self-help book okay where do i pre-order that no. <laughs> does it come yeah well that's never gonna <laughs> that's never gonna see the light of day you know <laughs> so but there is there is there is a book there's at least a couple more books that that i've got rolling around in my head so um that will be coming out and and one of the other things that that i'm i, I really want to work on is an online uh, digital course you know where people can can uh, work on their dating and relationship uh skills online you know and and uh it and, and it, it, it i have so many different ideas it may morph into like a one day online uh workshop or um uh, something along that line so there's that's that's yet to come well see that uh, that that kind of leads into the second question because uh, what what uh, what you had mentioned earlier was that you were talking to somebody online earlier and kind of kind of giving relationship advice to them. 
uh, it made me wonder, do you do something like that on Facebook Live where people could actually sit down with you for an hour, you know, and and text their problems or whatever to you and you answer their questions? Or is that something you do or, or intend to do? Um, to do it in a text format, I do a I do a, a Facebook Live every Monday uh, for 30 minutes. And it's it basically whatever issues I've run across over the weekend and and how it applies to dating and relationships. And, and this is a lot of personal experience coming in here. Sure. Uh, but that's and, and if you you can find me on Facebook, it, it's the, the, the title or the, the connection is at Rick Soda Beer Coach. And that'll take you to my Facebook page. And if you like my Facebook page, you'll get my daily tips, insights, and inspirations in your newsfeed. And then you'll get notices when I post my blogs and and uh, when I do my Facebook lives. And uh, I do have people that write in questions, but answering, you know, doing doing a coaching session through texting and email is really difficult. And I can usually take one question from one person because I, I put some effort into, into that response. Um, I do offer, I do offer a 30 minute free consultation. You just have to send me an email at, at Rick at ricksodabeer.com, or um, you can send me a, 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 pr- a private message at, at, uh, in, through Facebook, through my, uh, Facebook page and you know we can schedule something and and we can do it um, via Skype or via Zoom or FaceTime you know whatever whatever works best for for you or for for your for your listeners um, so I, you know I have some flexibility there but yeah we can and, and I tend not to try to to keep you in coaching too long the idea is to to get you the information, teach you what you need to know, and then move you on. And then if you need to come back and get a refresher or, you know, get an update and saying, okay, Rick, I've done all these things, um, but this is what I'm running into. Then we can do a quick tune up session, so to speak, and, and move on. So um, I'm not, I'm not like some professionals where they want you to keep coming in for the next 20 years, Um, you know, and, and, that's just not the way I want to work. And, and you don't need me to, if, if I'm that terrible in getting you to move forward, then, then it's not good for, it's not good for you. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But uh, yeah, so the guys, the, all these things will be in the description down below. Uh, I'll make sure that I get all the links into that description. So that way you guys can find uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Soda beer and be able to link up with him, get his book uh, in some way, shape, or form. What are some of the best ways for people to contact you if they do want to get a hold of you? The best way is either through email or, um, and, and that is my preferred preferred uh, per, my preferred method of contact. Uh, I, I don't always get to check my my Facebook uh, messages, uh, at least not as quickly as 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 I'd like to. Uh, because emails ding right into my phone and, and I'm this, this email, an email addict. And, you know, when it dings, I gotta say, Oh, who, who, who emailed me, who messaged me? You know, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, you know, but it, it's, it's, it, this is the death of me, the, the, the bane of my existence, these the <laughs> smartphones. So, <laughs> but we all have them, so we all use them. So anyway, but that's the best way to get through me through to me is Rick at ricksodabeer.com. All right. And I it's funny, I'm laughing because I'm the exact opposite. Uh it's easier to get a hold of me through Facebook because of the fact that I get so many notifications email wise that yeah. I have I have to tell people like I run a I, I run a network of podcasts. And okay. I tell people when they send me their episodes for upload. Through email, I always tell them you have to contact me to let me know you sent that email because I don't check it all the time. <laughs> and because like yeah. through through all the places that I release these episodes, I have so much spam email that if I had notification <sighs> on on my phone, my phone would never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Fortunately, yeah. I'm not that bad, but you know. <laughs> I don't have that much spam, I guess. And so, uh, I'm lucky, but anyway, yeah, those are, those are the best, that's the best way to get a hold of me. 
Okay, great. And so, guys, uh, this is where, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end this episode here. I am definitely inviting you back on. We, we've got to have more conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. I've loved it. This has been a great this has been a great hour and, and I don't know how long. <laughs> About an hour ten. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but guys, make sure you're checking out the book. Go to Amazon, go to go to uh ricksodabeer.com and and get yourself a copy of his book, Dating Backwards. And of course, guys, if you liked this video in any shape way, way, shape, or form, hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Check out all the other great uh podcasts of realm of the miss entertainment and go over to our sister channel realm of the miss entertainment for all your video game and tabletop role-playing needs and of course if you prefer your podcast in audio only format we've got you covered just look up realm of the miss entertainment on anchor.fm apple itunes spotify pandora or wherever quality podcasts can be heard again mr soda beer absolute pleasure uh you like it like i said i've got so many freaking like i'm reevaluating my own dating life talking to you <laughs> maybe maybe i should just sit on one of your half hour sessions on monday <laughs> we'll do it chris we'll do it <laughs> right on guys thank you for joining us thank you to my guest one last time and i will catch you on the next breaking the fourth wall and just remember i love you you're perfect now change <laughs>